So, um, good afternoon to everyone. Um, my paper is entitled, and I'm presenting my paper here entitled, Developing a Strategic Framework in Reducing Urban Heat Island Effect for Cooler High Density Communities, the case of Sampaloc, Manila. So, as a tropical country, uh, we are experiencing a microclimate phenomenon that we call UHI effect. And this is observed as a higher temperature evident in cities or urban locations compared to other surrounding areas. For my research um, problem, it aims to formulate a strategic framework for mitigating urban heat island effect in the district of Sampalo that can be applied to high density communities in Metro Manila. So these are my significance of the study. And my first objective is to identify the areas with high and low UHI um, using Sampaloc, Manila as the study area and to determine, assess the factors that directly and indirectly influence the urban heat island effect on the study area. And my third objective is to determine the elements that affect the factors identified and relate its influence on the UHI effect. And the last uh, objective is to formulate a strategic framework aimed at um, mitigating and alleviating the impacts of urban heat island uh, to achieve a much cooler high density community in Sampano. So for the scope and limitations of the study, uh, it will assess the urban or it assess the urban heat island effect on Sampaloc district that is the most and least affected. And it's also described the factors that contribute to the UHI effect in the area and the elements that affect this. It will also link and compare the measured temperature, humidity and heat index temperature to the ideal comfort zone and focus on the formulation of strategic framework and recommending design. And this uh, does not include air monitoring quality and the evaluation of health-related condition and negative impact of the UHI to the residents. And this is not also intended to solve the current transportation problem in the area. So this figure here shows the conceptual frame for the study as the basis for identifying the impact of the issue for the problem and the study's development of a strategic framework that can help reduce UHI effect in the area. So the city of Manila is divided into six congressional districts with 100 barangay zones and that is composed of 895 barangays. So it has 17 administrative districts and District 4 with 17 zone is comprised of Sampaloc alone. So it is described as a high density mixed residential or mixed use residential and commercial area which is also known as the University Bell. So for the uh, research uh, methodology, so the study used a mixed method approach in order to have a comprehensive understanding of the relationship with the UHI effect. So it uses convergent parallel mixed method wherein it converged and merged and collected data drawn from the quantitative and the qualitative data. And it uses descriptive method in choosing the site. Ground truthing also helped to assess and verify what the GIS or the satellite image maps against what is physically seen in the ground. And the research participants are the local residents of Sampalo. And under descriptive research, the study used a 10% of the population represented as the total number of lots or structures in the specific barangay. And this was done uh, for the month of May and June in 2019 to determine the respondents who will be given questionnaires. They, uh, it is, the study also used non-random or judgment sampling. So the method of measuring land surface temperature, um, air temperature, and humidity, it uses an open street map and satellite map from the QGIS. And this was used to create and develop a shape file of the study area. So there are temperature measurements that were taken simultaneously by uh, riding a tricycle and stopping at the designated barangay station point. And the air temperature, land surface and humidity were measured in the selected barangays. So it shows here the map where the field survey uh, was done, consisted of 17 station points. So for the results and finding, this are, it shows here, the figure shows here the heat maps that shows the location of the highest medium and the lowest temperature for the land surface. Term, uh, for the land surface. And then this measured during daytime and air measured during the nighttime. So it also shows here heat maps uh, with areas with high and low temperature. And is during 11 to 2 p.m. which is considered for the wet and dry season. Its purpose was to ascertain the residents' response on um, the urban heat experience compared to the nighttime air temperature. And it also shows here the areas with high and low humidity. So here show, uh, it shows here the factors that influences the UHI effect in the study area. And based on the survey conducted, the indirect factors are related to the repercussions of the identified direct factors. 
and then in evaluating uh, building and site configurations to identify the factors that distinguish the barangays with the highest medium and lowest temperature. The study documented the selected houses of the barangays where the temperatures were repeated, uh, were recorded high, as well as the different areas of the remaining zones in the district. And then based on the collected data and observation through time of measurements and field visits along the area, the similarity, the similarity of the district's physical features for each zone are diverse, dense, and mixed use in functions. However, there is still a distinctive quality that impacts the UHI increase in the study area. So it, this shows here, the table um, shows here the responses um, revealed um, the influence of the physical influence, uh, the physical features rather on the UHI effects. And this led to the architectural design solutions and initial framework in mitigating UHI effect. So likewise, the, the table here, next table, is re regarding the heat stress or the response of the residents regarding the heat stress that indicates the social impact that influence UHI effect in a selected area. And these are associated to the heat index or what we call the human discomfort in index and thermal comfort zone. So here, uh, we, we can say that under the uh, description of the heat discomfort index, the result temperature it posed danger due to the increased likelihood of heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke if the activity is continued. And from which is shown here in this figure, the heat index relationship to thermal comfort zone. And from the data collected, uh, the mitigation strategies were extracted from here. This led to the formulation of the framework. So in order to relate the temperature, humidity, and heat index to comfort zone, the study used a bioclimatic chart and that, that considered the air temperature, the relative humidity, and air velocity. So any climatic condition determined by its dry bulb temperature and relative humidity can be plotted on the chart. So um, based on the result of the study, a framework is proposed for mitigating the UHI as a guide in designing a polar high density community. So this framework was drawn out from the measured temperature data. And this is where they identified factors that directly and indirectly contribute to UHI effect, as well as the physical and social impact information were gathered after determining the location of the highest range of the temperature in the study area. And this was linked to the equivalent heat index with regards to comfort zone. So this shows here the legal basis for the framework and it acknowledges this, uh, the Climate Change Act of 2009 up until the IPCC report 2018-2019. And the purpose of the framework and the need and its objectives, well, as, as an environmental risk, it requires the framework to serve as guidelines applicable to local settings that can be useful for urban communities and the people concerned in mitigating the UHI effect. So this framework vision, so this figure here, the framework's visions here, uh, they overlap to show its relationship with each other and they can't be separated in order to be or to become successful. So it is where adaptation, green designs, uh, in green designs and green concept can reduce urban heat island effects. So this will be viable if these different functions are integrated with, uh, with the green concepts while considering a continuous development. So from here, um, the um, for formulating the uh, initial framework here, it required more or less the, acquired, uh, the data, the acquired data were correlated here. And this shows the summarized data to correlate the quantitative and qualitative data. And this is as a guide for the framework as possible solutions. And then this shows here, this table uh, shows here um, as, a rule, as a rule of thumb for the Philippine setting, the range of comfort to zone is about 24 degrees to 27 degrees and the ideal relative humidity is around 35 percent to 55 percent so this table shows the air temperature that is recorded at 11 a.m to 2 p.m while this table uh, on the other hand at the center shows the air temperature from 9 p.m to 12 a.m and this during the month of may and june so all of this data in correlation to the bioclimatic chart of the barangays that represented were used to better understand the comfort zone and in turn identify the problems and provide possible design solution. So here is the first approach, which is um, the principles of passive um, design and structures and recommendation adapting green concepts that um, more or less this is the first strategy which can result to comfortable and cost efficient structures. And the second approach 
uh, was to examine function in zoning types where the framework can serve as a scheme for others. So this uh, third approach, on the other hand, was to develop an independent initiative in the community towards uh, green environment awareness. So this arise from the, st the heat stress they experience in the area. So this table shows uh, how the approaches and strategies provide direction in design and planning for the re reduction of the UHI effect in the district. And this is also applicable to any urban district in Manila. And um, it shows you the graphical representation of applicability in, uh, in Sampaloc district. Uh, it shows a conceptual elevation of the houses along Mindoro. Uh, street located in Barangay 57 and Zone 56, which illustrates the congruency of the status to the current condition of the district. So each are applicable to every structure. While on the lower part here, these figures and this table show the architectural design strategies of the frame of the frame that can be applied here. So here in a graphical representation to examine zone unity, we can say that a variety of functions or mixed use type existed in the district that resulted to inappropriate zoning type. So it shows here the strategies that can be applied in the district. So recommendation of the adopting green concept on structures and landscape in the area are more effective if community participate through resourcefulness with strong implementation of the LGU. And then for my conclusion, so uh, the UHI in Sampaloc district area vary in one location at the same time, uh, time frame, but on a different uh, day because which is a function of land surface temperature, the air temperature, and the factors that influence this temperature. So different factors greatly contribute to the UHI effect in the district and indirect factors that are what were identified are an outcome in which can exacerbate the direct uh, factors. So the elements that influence the direct uh, and indirect factors help increase the UHI effect. And then um, Temperature remains constant in one space but varies because of the different factors. And in order for the um, in order for the design or in order for the framework to become feasible, so at the initial state of structure, the design must be an approach to understand the process, a scheme in re-examining zoning types. And this can be an independent initiative for the community to be involved in green environment awareness through their resourcefulness. So likewise, these are assured and with consideration integration on the environmental, the economic, and social viability that can lead to a long-term solution for a much poorer high-density community to be realized. So these are for the future researchers because um, there are no sp available specific data that focus in urban community to provide a mitigating strategy for UHI effect. So possible na, uh, research can be undertaken here and a more sophisticated instrument uh, can be used because um, um, since a simple and inexpensive tool was used in measuring land surface and air temperature, so it is much more recommended here. And also a measuring instrument that is fixed in uh, different locations may be applied uh, instead of a mobile manner, which is also recommended. So with this, I thank you for your time in listening to my paper, um, my presentation. Thank you very much and have a good day. And what's in car? Okay. Um, okay th thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, uh, Dr. Saira, uh, for your presentation. Uh, is there any question from the audience? Okay, from from your from your uh, study, can you can you please tell me what is the main main factors uh, to reduce the urban heat island? The factors. Yes, well, the I have mentioned factors. Uh, the different factors. So from what we call as um, the formulation of my concept of frameworks, um, I have identified the different factors that more or less have. Uh, and I've listed there uh, all of the factors, direct and indirect factors, that can influence the impact of UHI effect and that can increase the uh, UHI effect in the study area. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, 
Uh, there's uh, one question from the audience. Is, uh, is passive cooling system enough to achieve the comfort zone in high density area in Philippines? Or do you need active cooling system as well? Well, as much as possible, we are trying to implement passive cooling system here in the Philippines in our country. Because um, if, if we are, it's a fact that if we use more of an uh, mechanical system or even active cooling system, etc., etc., then it will turn, uh, it will in turn increase more the uh, heat in more or less in, in, in every surrounding, so in, in every place here in Metro Manila. So we try to go back to the basic, which is mm -hmm. more trees, more natural ventilation, mm -hmm. like what's that, more passive cooling, or sometimes you can actually use uh, in solar, uh, making uh, use of sustainable na materials, etc. Mm. Okay, thank you. And, um, and I saw some areas, it's very, it's hotter than other area. That why that spot is, is you know, why that spot is uh, uh, more more hot from from um, your presentation. Yeah, more hotter. What 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 is the, the main factors? Um, the material or the density of of the of the community. That is um the result that I found out because mm -hmm. I have. Uh, my first objective is to identify the highest, the lowest. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I have only, I have also included the medium, the medium uh, um, where the uh, highest the UHI is located. But more on um, as as per advice uh, by my advisor, it will be uh, more on identification is more on highest and the lowest only. So as as a result of my findings, so both of this, you highest and the lowest were not exactly the lowest it's particularly similar in every location of the district oh, so the result here if ever hearing difference is very negligible so the application of the framework it's particularly the same in all of the locations in all of the areas so of, all, of all the whole district and it's a good thing if ever that you have to do a research with the whole of uh, the different districts of metro manila so that is one way, uh, one recommendation that I have to more or less uh, to study. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Saira. Um,